Are cities and towns sexist? It's a question that's been on the minds of academics, feminists, designers, and policymakers for decades. Their questions have prompted new ways of looking at our world, a world that has historically been built by men for men. By 2030, more than 60% of the world's population will live in urban environments. But if the very places that we call home have inequality built into them, how will we create a world that works for everyone? Take toilets, for instance. In 2017, researchers at Ghent University in Belgium studied the layouts of different public bathrooms. They discovered that the most common design in use today means women on average spend six minutes queuing to use the bathroom, while men only wait 11 seconds. And once you start looking, examples of urban planning and design that perpetuate inequality can be found almost everywhere. Let's look at car safety as another example. Insufficient data with research using female body types in crash tests means women are far more likely to be seriously injured in a frontal car crash than men. And in developing countries, when women don't have access to safe transport, they are less likely to work than men. So what needs to be done to create more equal cities? In order to create cities uh, um, that are more inclusive, I think we need almost a urban revolution. Julia Machi is an urban specialist leading the Cities for Women program at Cities Alliance a global partnership fighting urban poverty and promoting better urban planning in cities around the world. We need uh, to reimagine the way we build and live in cities almost totally. And of course, this uh, how to start this, how to start this revolution depends on the local culture, on the local context. We need to ask and ask again questions like, do public space have enough toilet? Can women walk in that neighborhood without being harassed? Does public transport accommodate mothers with strolls? So this type of question um, help also understanding how gender inequalities shape urban space. And the first step is to recognize these inequalities that sometimes we are almost used to them and we don't recognize them anymore. Another important aspect is the memory. Uh, we, we often don't think about that, but the history of our city is, um, is important. No? And there are hardly any landmark or monuments or streets named after women. And this, of course, uh, um, means that a part of the history is forgotten. The contribution of women into, to, to the society development is forgotten. But also this influence, also the image that we have uh, of what women can do and achieve uh, in, in life. If we look at uh, also political uh, inclusion and participation, uh, yes, women are leading uh, social change uh, at uh, the grassroots level. They are leading uh, civic organizations. But when we look at formal leadership, uh, we are not there yet. So only around 20% of the mayors worldwide are women. So we need still to work a lot on the different elements and aspects of inequalities in cities and have a uh, kind of a holistic and integrated approach to tackle them all together. Despite the challenges that persist, urban revolutions are slowly starting to happen, with a number of cities adopting more gender-sensitive approaches to planning. In Paris, for example, Anne Hidalgo, the city's mayor, has introduced the concept of the 15-minute city, which aims to ensure residents have everything they need within a 15-minute radius of their home. And in Bogota, a program called Blocks of Care is aiming to transform access to childcare services and facilities as part of efforts to reduce the disproportionate burden of care that is faced by women. And in Nepal, UN Ops has been working with Cities Alliance to identify infrastructure challenges affecting women. What's important to note about each of these initiatives is that they're not only helping to transform women and girls' lives, but the lives of all people. Having a gender lens in urban planning is about having different perspectives, regards, a different way at the end to listen to people. If we create more inclusive cities, this will not only improve the livelihood and the lives of women and girls, but this will contribute to the well-being of the entire society, of the old city, 
And once people's needs are really understood, that's when innovation can start to happen. New ways of doing things, urban revolutions, and in the end, better cities and towns that work not just for men, but for all of us.